Welcome back YouTubers, Adzi here again, hope you're all doing well. Um, got one of mine on the bench today because it's a little bit poorly, um, not entirely 100% sure what's causing it, but what we've currently got, so this is my classic army G3, now which I've done previous modifications of bits inside here, mostly things like pistons and springs etc, so nothing too complicated, however, the problem I had the other day when we were at game day was semi-auto, mostly using it, it decided, this is on more than one occasion as well, that it would lock up. So we got no response from the trigger whatsoever. Now, it wasn't your classic locking up where you could just then pop it under full auto, little short burst, back up to semi, and it was fine. It would lock here, and it would also be locked there, so it wouldn't do anything. So I thought, okay, maybe we have an issue in the gearbox. So on the day, in the back of my car, opened it all up, just to see if we could do a quick emergency repair on the day. Um, absolutely fine mechanically inside, so nothing mechanically looked out of place. Now it was a really, really warm day, so I was wondering that perhaps it might have been causing havoc with a little MOSFET. So that is the classic army MOSFET that comes as standard in these guns. Um, so I thought, I don't know, maybe it's that, because that could be having a funny five minutes in the heat, didn't like it, did it on more than one occasion. Um, so I thought, what can we do? So perhaps we need to replace that. Now, it just so happens by sheer chance that around the similar time I was playing with this, I was contacted by a company called eShooter, who are these guys here. Now, I'll put a link in the description to their website, and they kindly asked me if they send out one of their new Kestrel V2 wireless electronic trigger units, would I put a little video together? So I said, of course. You've got to say yes, um, and that then worked perfectly because we're going to take out the original MOSFET in here and the trigger setup, and we're going to put that because that is a complete replacement unit. This is now I haven't opened this yet, so together we'll have a little look to see what this is all about, and we'll get it in the gun and then we'll go and test it. So, in the box. Obviously we've got the MOSFET itself, the replacement trigger system with wiring. Um, there is an installation kit which has got various sort of mounting shims, Dean's connectors, bit of heat shrink, etc. So that's all good. Um, the all important stickers, the white ones have come on the selector plate, they're obviously going to work with the optical sensors on that. And of course the all important manual. Right, so let's do this. So step one should probably be Pull your gun apart. Be a little bit on the difficult side to put a MOSFET in if you don't take it apart. I hope you know what you're doing. Right, we're in the gearbox. Now note that this obviously is a version 2 gearbox and trigger set we're working on. Key to it being Kestrel V2. This is not for your V3 boxes or other ones. So make sure we're on a V2 if you're gonna do it. So that's all the old wiring. So that's the whole bit that we've taken out. This is the main bit we're gonna be replacing. Uh, and we're gonna take this out as well. This is the semi-release lever. This is what normally dictates semi-auto. Um, what we're running on here has got optical sensors, so we don't need that anymore, so that's coming out as well. Now at this point, I've completely stripped everything out of the gearbox. I've even taken all of the grease out, and I've even cleaned my hands so that we're not going to get any grease on the new MOSFET, because this will have optical sensors on it, and the last thing you want to do is get those covered in grease, because then it will limit its performance. Um, so, what we're going to try and do, now I believe this should come apart. Oh my goodness, right, moment of truth, there we go. So, that is the base of this. So that is gonna go down there, and then that's your top half, so that's gonna come in round that way. Okay. Let's put that to one side, and we're gonna mount this side first of all. Now, I would imagine there's gonna be some form of modification required. So the first bit 
that I've noticed I'm going to need to remove is going to be this pin here. Now, not all gearboxes are going to be the same, so you will have to put a bit of common sense to whatever you're, you're doing if you're going to do yours. That pin is coming out, so we'll remove that first of all, and then hopefully that should then sit flat in there. So let's try that. We're going to get the trusty Dremel out, and we're going to grind that out of here, and then we'll try again. Right, so that's the camera's going to focus. So I've taken that pin out, so it's nice and smooth now. I'm going to make sure it's clean and there's no sort of swarf or bits of the cutting left in there because again, we don't want to get on the MOSFET. Okay, so we're going to gently line this up with this to make sure we can fit. And the other bit we should probably check actually as well because on the back of here, there are the optical sensors for the uh, selector switch. We need to make sure they are going to fit through here as well. So I'll tell you what we'll do. Oh, in fact, yeah, look at that. Okay, so that is out of a line. So we need to take some material off here to allow space for that. It's a good job we checked that, actually. So, yeah, everything else is good. But I think before we go pushing that in there, because we don't want to damage these on the back, Let's make sure that it's got enough space for it. Right, so what I've done up till now then, is I've taken that pin off, and I've also taken some material from in here, so I've moved this back a bit to allow some room for what we saw earlier. So let's try again. Again, try it gently, so we do not want to force anything at this stage. This, we want to get to a point where it literally drops in. So hopefully, if we get the cables to sit in where they belong as well, Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, it's looking good. Alright, oh, okay, I think that's in. That seems to be pretty flush now. So that's sitting in good there. And then on the flip side, we can see we've got space for those sensors. So yeah. Obviously, just to reiterate, every gearbox will be different. Just because I've done it this one does not mean it's the same on every single one. So again, put that common sense hat on. And work it out right we're going to mount that in there now so i'm going to use the original screw that was holding the trigger um, contacts in there uh, make sure you've got a fiber washer to go between it so that it insulates it and then we're just going to get that okay so that's held in that's not going anywhere uh, also though make sure your screw not protruding across the back. Um, so that's nice and flush there. So we don't want that protruding out and causing an issue later on. So the next bit we're going to do is put the wires in. Now we want these two to be able to come over to this far side of the gearbox. So we're going to ensure that those go in the channel first. And the reason for that is, is because they have to cross where the motor's coming in. So we want them as low and as flat to the gearbox case as we can possibly have them. Uh, and then that means when we put this one at the top, which this one is gonna run all the way down round, that is gonna hold them in nice and flat and low as that runs out into where the motor is in your hand grip. So that is how we want those. Okay, so I've prepared and cleaned the other side of the gearbox now. So we're going to have a go at putting this bit in. Now, initially, initially, there's a few things to watch out for here. So initially that fits in quite nicely and sits there. However, however, there are a couple of bits. Now one bit, obviously is highlighted in the manual. So read the manual and if the manual says it, it's probably important. That is talking about... On the flip side of this, there's a little, the little blue bit. That apparently is for the Bluetooth. Now apparently if you haven't cut a hole in the gearbox, your Bluetooth's not gonna function properly. Also, that protrudes ever so slightly. So the only reason that's sitting flat in the minute is because I've got it in this gearbox. Anyway, I've got a ridge. Now I'm gonna get rid of all of that material there so that, that will sit 100% flat. Once I've dug a hole in there, that Bluetooth module will sit through. That way that will sit in there 100% flat and all that material will be removed so it all sits flush. So let's get on with that. OK, 
Okay, so on this other gearbox now, we have grinded that down, so it's super flat, super smooth, and we've cut a hole on there. That's probably a bit bigger than what it needed, but I prefer to do that than have something a bit too small and getting in the way. So, if we put this in here now, that will quite happily sit in there, super flat, so it means there's gonna be loads of room in there for it. And if we flick it over this side, we've got a nice neat hole for the Bluetooth connection to come through, so nothing is in the way everything's sitting flat and smooth which means once that's pressed onto the top of the other side of it in the gearbox and this gearbox shell comes down there's going to be nothing restricting it right so pretty confident that we are now at a point in which we can rebuild this gearbox and put everything back in so we've got that bit sitting flush we've smoothed all that out so it's going to take the other side of the uh, uh, mosfet on it so we're going to put it all back together but what we're also going to do at the same time is note that we're not going to do too much grease now a lot of these are covered in it so i'm going to reduce the amount of grease or excess grease in places we don't need it for the pure reason that the last thing we want is any of this excess grease that's not required flying around the gearbox and going on the optical sensors because it would just affect all the performance so any bits here that do not require grease so obviously we want it on the teeth or the bits of contact so I've minimized that slightly there we go we're not taking it all off we're just reducing the amount of it so that it's a much cleaner level of grease in there we're just making sure that that bit isn't catching that gear we want to be able to see a space between it so the sensors can line up, so it's all looking good. Uh, although I've just realized I've missed something. And the something I've missed is quite important. Uh, we haven't got a trigger in there. We need to do that. Right, so putting the trigger in, you've got to be so careful because you've got little optical sensors in here that are going to be detecting this. Um, now this mustn't touch any of them. Okay, that's in, and then that cable, we need to make sure it's going through, there's a gap on the front of this gearbox, so you'll need to make sure you've got that way on. Let's rotate this round. There's a gap in that gearbox that that cable can come through, so you need to make sure you have that. So all the gearbox is back together. The next thing we have to do is get our selector plate ready. And by that, we need to put one of the little white stickers on here. So I've chosen a completely white one off of this sheet. There are some with a black strip, thin and thick. Um, now, the reason I've gone for the whole white one is we want the white bit to cover these little sensors here. So these sensors that you see in this bit, uh, you've got your safe, your semi and your full auto. Now. I want it all white because when that goes in and that's in its position, the safe position is covered up when it's uh, in the sort of fully forward position, which is safe. So that means I want white sticker all the way to the end. If it was coming further over, closer to this one, that's where these ones come in because the black strip will then not get picked up on those sensors. But as we're not covering it, we need a complete white one stuck right up to the edge of this. So as we move it across from safe to semi, to full auto it's going to cover up each sensor individually so you'll need to make a judgment on your weapon whether you need the black strips down there as i say just to reiterate you only need the black strips if in safe it was covering up the semi uh, semi position as well for example because the reason you want that is the black doesn't reflect the light to pick up the sensors also because my selector plate is a very light color i've got just a sharpie pen and I've coloured in a little bit there to blacken it off so that there's no confusion with that bit and the white sticker, just in case. So yeah, we just need to get all that back attached in there um, and then we're going to get this back in the gun shortly. So just before we put this in the body, one last thing. This little piece here, which is coming out the front of the gearbox, so make sure you've got a hole for that to come through and it's not going to snag any cables. That needs to stick right at the front here so we're going to stick that on there because what that is that 
will make contact with the mag in the magazine well and there's a tiny little button there that pushes so that the MOSFET knows when there is and isn't a mag inside the weapon. So that you can set up with some of the features on there for reload count and things like that. So that's going to stick on there but the other thing you need to make sure you're doing is if you're going to put that at the front of your gearbox a bit like in my shell here for the G3 when that sits in that's going to sit like that which means this front bit here there which is normally making contact with the base of the gearbox you will need to cut a slot out of that so that the, when you put this in there that is not going to damage this okay so we've got to the point where the lower assembly of the gun with the gearbox is now all built with the Kestrel V2 inside. So, what we're gonna do now, we're gonna connect a battery for this. I'm gonna, just gonna use an 11-1, uh, just to get this going. Now this is the first time I'm, I have not plugged this in yet, so this will be the first time I have plugged this in. Now I've got the app up. So this is the eShooter hat app, that you can find that by going onto the Play Store, searching for eShooter, and you can download that, which you'll need in which to keep this programmed. So, let's connect a battery and see what happens. Right, let's click on V2. There we go, so that has found it. So this is using the Bluetooth. Let's click on that. So we're at this point now with the password. The default password is 888888. So that's six eights and we're in. Okay, so loads of information to take up first of all. So should we just see if we can get this into shoot? What do we need to do? So we've got safe, semi and auto. Should we see if it does something? Well, that looks like a good start. All right, and so now that we've got a brief idea of how all the app works and we know the gun is working and firing, uh, we shall rebuild the whole thing so it's ready to shoot. Um, and we're going to have a play with some of these features out on the range. Okay, so we've managed to get everything installed, gun rebuilt, and now we've made our way down to Worthing Airsoft where we're taking full advantage of their range they've got here so that we can test it. Um, we've got the battery in there, 11 1 battery, and we've got their app on hand just here so we're going to go through some of the basic controls now initially um, we're going to make sure this is paired up so we've got the app open we're going to go into Kestrel V2 it's going to find us and then we're going to select that so that we have got into the diagnostic settings and we can play around with some of the features so at the minute we've got that just set to the standard so the gun should be working on semi-auto and full auto with the relevant um, selector points um, so we'll just make sure that's going and then we'll play with it from there. So first of all then, semi. Working fine. And if we click over the full auto, we should get what we expect. Perfect. So that's the first bit. So what we're then going to try, uh, we've got the different selection modes on there. Now if we change the auto mode, which we can set to a number of different things, um, we will try the burst mode secondly which means that's set to a default free now you can modify it to a greater number on that if you wish to on the burst but that should mean that with that in the auto mode we only get no matter how long you hold that trigger for it's only ever firing three um, another mode that we can do if we continue through the list we've got UG mode or AUG so anyone that's ever played with one of the Steyr UG models um, they'll know that those triggers have got a half pull for semi and a full pull for full auto so that means that with that set like that half a pull is semi and if you pull it all the way you get a full auto burst so it's dead easy um, next mode that we're going to have a go with is going to be binary. So for anyone out there who's a bit of a DSG fan, for example, um, you might find this one quite useful. That means it's going to be a form of semi-auto, except it's going to release a BB with every pull and release of the trigger. So 
so as you can see you can pretty much get a full auto um, if you will off on the sort of a semi-auto action so uh, yeah that's your binary So one of the other features we're going to look at is the pre-cocking mode. Now I've turned this on and I've set it onto high because what that's going to do, that's going to load your piston back after every single shot. With a, when you pull the trigger, it's going to almost instantaneously release that round so that it's as quick as it can be. Just reduce that minimum delay before that BB is travelling towards your opponent. Now another setting that we've got on here, if I get the gun in closer we can see, is the trigger sensitivity. So at the minute we've got this set to low, so if I gently pull that, you almost got to pull the trigger all the way for it to register firing. Now if I turn it up to the other extreme, so once we've adjusted that to the high sensitivity, we'll find there's going to be much less of a pull. before that releases the round. So another feature we've got on the app as well, if you've got a gun that's got a particularly fast rate of fire, you can lower that to 90%, 80%, 70%, 60%, even down to 50% rate of fire if you feel you need to. Um, maybe you're playing at a site that won't let you have your maximum speed that your weapon's capable of. You can reduce that should you need to. Um, you've also got the option of having it simulate a certain number of rounds in your magazine before you've got to do a full reload and that's using that switch that we've got in there which registers when the mag's plugged into the gun you can set that to however many rounds you want that to kind of count down before you have to do a simulated reload to give you a bit more of a realistic experience for example so the last couple of options that you're able to do on this is basically covering the type of gears you've got in it now i've got standard 18 to 1 gears so that's what led it set to on this but you might have some 12 to 1 some 13 to 1 16 to 1, whatever you've got in there you can modify the settings on this app so that um, it's better suited for what you've got in the weapon. And of course, most importantly, you've got your LiPo warning to mean, ensure that you don't run your LiPos too low and damage them. So you can have all that set on there as well. So there you go, that gives you a run through of all the different changeable settings using the Kestrel V2. We've had a bit of fun on the range as well. Hope you've enjoyed that a bit. So let's go back to the armory. And just like that, we're back in the armory. So a successful installation of the e-shooters Kestrel V2 MOSFET and obviously testing down the range. We've seen all the features on there now. That's working really well. Um, it does seem to have fixed the issue that I had uh, with this gun, with it just locking up every now and again. Um, and I think that was to do with the original MOSFET. Um, had a few issues there on a really hot day. So could it have been the temperature possibly? Who knows, but we had a few lockups. That we've tested on another warm day haven't had the same issue. So hopefully I can say goodbye to that now. Um, so I won't be needing that anymore as we've now got the Kestrel in there. So I hope you found that really useful. Um, so a huge thank you to eShooter for supplying one of these to me. Um, if after seeing the video, you do decide you are gonna go and treat yourself to one of these, um, when you're buying it at your shopping cart, if you enter the promo code ADZ, that will get you a further 10% off your purchase. Um, I'm gonna pop a link in the description below of where to find those and about the discount code. Uh, but other than that, hope you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one.